Are you, uh, am I on? Yes, we are on. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday and welcome back to another uh, John Galen live. Um, I'm actually joining him today. Very excited about that. John's gonna be discussing how Mountain West IRA got started. So John, tell us, how did this get started for you? Well, let's go way back in time. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We were talking the other day in our, our employee, our staff meeting and said, hey, what should I talk about this week on live? And because I've already talked about the markets and there really isn't much change there. And other than the shockingly high um, unemployment figures of 20 million more people being out of work this week, taking us up to about 50 million people total. Um, but there's nothing that's really changed in all the coronavirus and things are slowly opening and and all that so i thought i'd get away from coronavirus and investment talk today and talk about um how this whole thing got started and i'm going to go way back because i don't know that anybody knows my my total story and i'm going to be talking about my book toward the end of the um toward the end of the live segment but uh, I'm going to go back to my first job. And my first job was when I was 10 years old. And I used to deliver newspapers in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was born and raised in Las Vegas. And I had a route of 110 papers, which is a lot of papers on a bike. Those are back in the days when you hopped on. They delivered the papers to your house at like 4 in the morning and uh, three or four in the morning and then you would have to fold them all put rubber bands on them stick them in bags in your bike and ride around the neighborhood and then at the end of the month you would have to go collect from everyone so there was no billing system at that point in time it was just all collections and then you would turn in the collections to the um newspaper and uh, you got to keep any tips that you got so it was basically an unpaid position and uh so I can say that my first job was an unpaid job, and uh, I, it it was it was fun, it was exciting, but it was very hard and it was very tedious. and And I don't remember how long I did that, but it was quite a long period of time. But here's why I tell that story. The reason why I tell that story is because once a month I got to learn how it is to work with people and work with people's personalities and find out what you know what it is about people and money that that is either good or bad or how they react to things or how they tell you things things like that because i got to meet 110 of my neighbors every month and say hi to them and collect money from them and i think that some of the things that our society has lost today is the ability to communicate on a respectful manner and exchange uh conversation while exchanging money and that's because, and this was even happening before coronavirus, is everything is done online, everything is done through automatic payment methods, so there's no interaction. And it's created a situation, in my opinion, where uh, communication skills are severely going down with, I think, a lot of the population. Uh, so as I progress through life, and as many of you that listen to this progress through, through life, what I'd like you to take away from it is think about in your life, things that you've done to create in your life, just create, uh, whether it's creating a family or creating a business or creating a piece of art, just the things that you create and how you work within a structure of other people to uh, explain to them and be proud of what you've created without being ashamed of what you've created. And I think that there's a lot of shaming going on in the world. And I think there's a lot of people that just get very mad at differing opinions. And it's really too bad. So after 10, I then uh, in my second job was also an unpaid position. But but I made good tips on the first one. <laughs> the second one. <laughs> you weren't a very smart kid <laughs> i wasn't a very smart kid but you know it's funny i was on facebook today and somebody was talking about something and oh it was about servers uh food servers and how people are idiots to take a job where their income where they don't get at least minimum wage for jobs 
I happen to disagree with that opinion that was expressed this, this morning that I was reading. And I say, I think everyone should take a job that has no minimum wage mm -hmm. because then you truly learn what it's like to earn a living from scratch. You appreciate it more. You appreciate it more. So my second job was when I was 13 years old and I was a kennel boy for a vet. And I was a volunteer for the first Oh gosh, um, it must have been almost two years because I was too young to get paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe not two years, but you know, yeah, about 15. So, uh, so I would go in after school and I would clean kennels and I would watch procedures and I would learn all about it. And I wanted to be a vet at that point in time. So it was very interesting to me. It was intriguing to me. And my my income for that was all of the experience I got in working with animals that are harder to communicate with and understanding ways of nonverbal communication as well as verbal communication. And I also got to work with a plethora of clients and, and doctors whose also communication uh, types are different, the archaeal types that they call them of people and how they communicate. So I, I actually learned a lot and it was actually very valuable for me. And my first paycheck that I actually earned was when I was, uh, I think, 14 or 15. And I'm going to say it's right about the time when Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen came out. Mm. So I can't remember that, that was um, 74, or 75, but that's about the time that I started earning a paycheck and minimum wage at that time was $1.75 and that's what I was getting paid. So I was like, you know, thrilled because, hey, I got mm -hmm. a paycheck and after years of work. So I uh, worked for this particular vet uh, until about the age of 17. And then after that, um, ended up doing some other odd jobs and going back to a vet and worked for that second vet till the age of 20 uh, through through my first couple of years of college and I started college as pre-vet and I ended up not staying in that and going into business. I, I, after some experience in life, I felt that I liked business just as much. And my college that I was at where it was pre-vet was going to be eight years in Ames, Iowa. And I couldn't take the cold weather. <laughs> um, it was murder. Those 40, 50 below, you know, weeks oh. and months. No, thank you. Crazy. <laughs> So I ended up going back to Las Vegas and uh, staying in, in working one for One extreme to the while. other, huh? by the way. That was one extreme to the other, by the one way. One extreme to the other, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So I did that uh, and then uh, uh, finished my degree in business in uh, 1983 and went to work for New York Life, another non-paid position. So it was all commission and you had to get that out there and hustle and talk to people and learn how to talk to a uh, hundred people a week or a day, or it was a hundred people a week, but it was all face. -to -face. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't cold call uh, in life insurance in those days. It wasn't a cold call kind of thing, but it was getting out and talking to people mm -hmm. and, uh, or making warm calls off other people and figuring out how to sell 10 policies a week. And I was very successful at it. I was the uh, youngest million million dollar round table is an industry. It's actually a worldwide organization for life insurance agents. And you have to meet certain criteria to become a member of million dollar round table. They had big meetings and, and, you know, worldwide meetings. Very cool. Very cool organization. Very high end. Very, uh, very successful people that have worked very hard in their life. And I, in my first 12 months, my first full 12 months with New York Life, I became a million dollar roundtable member. At the time, I was the youngest million dollar roundtable member. I think that there's others that have been younger than me, but I was 24 years old, 23 when I started, 24 when I finished, uh, became a million dollar roundtable member and was uh, in various areas with New York Life and won several awards for for council meeting certain certain sales goals and and for certain types of policies and all that. So it taught me the value of working hard and learning to um, 
do things for yourself and for others based on your ability to be persistent and to come up with solutions. So it made me very solution oriented in life. Uh, from New York life, uh, I, I put out a prospectus and found an investor and opened up a the largest rock nightclub in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada at the time. And we had 52 major acts, starting with our opening act, built the club from scratch and had it for about four and a half years. Um, our first act was um, Night Ranger. We had Night Ranger was our first act. And our last act was Meatloaf. <laughs> and we had a whole bunch of great acts in between, uh, including such greats who've sold over 100 million albums as War, and Marshall Tucker Band and Dickie Bats and you know just all kinds of fun fun bands, uh, Fishbone and Red Hot Chili Peppers and just a, a whole mix of a whole lot of bands. Melissa Etheridge, and so I got to meet a whole lot of people in in a different area of life and do a, a lot of fun things. Um, gave me kind of a rock and roll background too because my agent that booked my bands for me, he and I had a relationship through rock and roll through promoting and rock and roll. Uh, from that, I went from uh, from the club uh, after selling that to um, Morgan Stanley. And I was with Morgan Stanley uh, while at the same time I did a master's program at UNLV for marriage and family therapy. It was actually uh, um, educational psychology and counseling because uh, I was more I was interested in the psychology of people and how they ticked in relationships and how it related to business. And the, the specialty within that, that was the actual, so the degree is counseling, um, it, it was um, psychological education and counseling or something like that. And, and but they call it the, the marriage and family therapy was the, uh, the specific uh, minor inside of there. Uh, so I've got a degree in marriage and family therapy and doing that and with with uh, morgan stanley built a very successful business with morgan stanley uh was um uh, vice president <clears throat> was a vice president with the company and uh just out of the blue i was newly happily married six months earlier this is 1999 now so i spent the bulk of my life in financial services my bulk of my adult life with some other cool things in between and um 1999 uh november 99 was actually november 5th 1999 by the way if you if you buy my book on amazon it's called stay alive this whole story at this point in time is in this book but uh i got very sick and i had a gallbladder stone that broke loose and blew up my entire bile system. It ended up over a four month period taking out two thirds of my pancreas, half my liver. Uh, several times my wonderful, beautiful new wife of six months heard don't expect him to make it through the night. Of course, nobody asked me about that. I had a different opinion. So uh, going through four years of that, uh, and it's quite a story in perseverance and and learning to keep a positive attitude and work toward your goals. Um, and this is how this is how uh, Mountain West IRA got started. I decided I didn't want to go back into the the grind and the hours of Morgan Stanley. Um, and Morgan Stanley treated me very well. They wanted me back, and and I eventually said, No, I'm not coming back. I'm going to go. I'm going to move to Idaho and moved to Idaho, uh, my wife and I, Lisa, we moved to Idaho and she went to work for, she was also, she was my partner at Morgan Stanley and she went over to Wells Fargo Investments in Idaho and I took a couple of years to heal and get better and worked on my house and uh, after that I was looking for something to do. And Lisa and I went to a real estate seminar and we were talking with them uh, about various investments and various things they do. And they talked about self-directed IRAs. And I said, man, that's right up my alley. I've got such a great background in financial services and financial ability. I know all about IRAs and 401ks. 
uh, I want to find out more. So we ended up talking to him and finding out about a company that sold franchises. And we bought a franchise in 2006. And that would have been April of 2006 from a company called Entrust. And we were with Entrust from 2006 through 2011. Our original name was uh, Entrust of Idaho, was our original company name through Entrust. We then changed it. We felt that it was too restrictive and we wanted to, to go into different territories that they had available. And so we changed it to Mountain West IRA and, and bought the Utah territory as well as Idaho. And so we did that um, as Mountain West, I'm sorry, it was Mountain West and Trust IRA. Then in 2011, um, there were various um, situations happening with the laws and various situations happening with, with Entrust and how they were working with their franchisees and business. And we were not, many of us were not uh, very happy with where it was going. And so we ended up buying ourselves out. We were one of the first, we were either first or second uh, franchisee to buy out, but we bought ourselves out, changed the name of our company to Mountain West IRA, which we are today and have substantially grown uh, ever since uh, in leaps and bounds. We're now um, 14 years old. What are we, 2020, 16, 14 mm -hmm. years old, April of 21. So we just passed 14 years old. April of 20. Um, we handle over 3,000 clients with over um, a half a billion dollars in assets. And, and it, it has also given us the ability to create uh, lifestyles for our employees that are consistent and are stable and lifestyles for ourselves and a, and a, a platform for our clients to do investments they normally wouldn't be able to do through a broker standard broker uh, and we pride ourselves on our service and we work constantly at, at getting better at it and and making sure we do the right things for people and it has led to a very consistent uh, level of success through the coronavirus situation and back, uh, oh gosh, I guess it was last year, I wrote a book called Stay Alive. That's what it looks like. If you go uh, to Amazon and look under John A. Galane, you'll see Stay Alive. Uh, and it's the story of everything that happened from about, it, it talks about my youth and some of the stories there, but the bulk of the first half of the book is what happened with the illness and then the second half of the book is how to create success in your business and how to use goal setting and your subconscious to get everything that you want in life whether it's business wise or relationships wise or uh, uh, just 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 anything that you want to accomplish it gives you that ability uh, with some cool little tips in there in the second half of the book um gosh where do i go from here so we're <laughs> just we're just continuing to do what we're doing uh we bought our original office we started our office in in our house here in boise uh in 2006 and shortly after after uh uh finding out that we we're going to be very very uh uh productive in business bought an office it is the back part of our current office. And then in 2006, we bought another part of the office building, their office condos. And then in 2011, we bought the rest of the building. So we have one whole building that our office sits in. And then in 2018, 19, 2019, we bought a whole, whole uh, two, two more offices in another building in the complex expanding and we're finding out that our expansion is so vast that we need more space so in uh february of this year we branched out we bought a, another building whole building bigger building increasing our space by about 30 to 40 percent and we're currently in the process of renovating that building of course the uh everything with coronavirus slowed us down we hope to be in the building by now but it'll probably be around july 1st 
either somewhere between July 1st and July 30th that we'll end up moving over to the new offices in the new building. So you that are listening to this live, you're the first people hearing this. It's the first time yes. I've it publicly. Exclusive details. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said you got exclusive details. I like yeah. it. Yes. And there's also more exciting things happening on the horizon because Mountain West continues to grow. And we are also, we have a, uh, another business called Productive. And Productive is a co-working office space. It's a very unique uh, type of co-working space for Idaho. Uh, they're starting to pop up in other places, but it's- I was gonna uh, say, I don't know if a lot of people know what that is. Will you explain what yeah, that is? Co-working space is where it used to be, uh, it used to be called just office suites. Like Regis does office suites where mm-hmm. you rent an office in a building and you just pay rent on that office. You don't have to, you know, the printers are supplied for you and the phones and there's a receptionist up front. So it's basically a space for you to work in. Well, this takes it to a different level where it's a socialization area. So not only do you have working space, but you also have the ability to socialize in that space and and yeah, uh, mingle with other people who are looking to network. And there'll be networking events and other events, you know, like there'll be situations where uh, people can will have either like yoga on premises or massages on premises where people can book those. So it's a working space as well as a social space, as well as a networking space, as well as a relaxation space. Right. So you get a whole bunch of things. And it's starting out, it'll be starting out this summer when we move out of our current offices, that'll be the first phase of it. And we've also purchased a piece of property in town over by HP in the, in the technology park. And we're in the process of putting together a 20,000 square foot uh, productive co-working space, a building with a huge um, uh, convention area where we can hold up to 300 to 350 people. Uh, if it's just seating or if it's tables and chairs, uh, like bringing in catering, I think it's 150 people, uh, as well as the co-working space and more events and an outside uh, area where we can do things like like have music or DJs or bands uh, and, and have all kinds of little things. So there'll be an outside seating area with it. All kinds of cool stuff coming to completely revolutionize co-working spaces and socializing in Idaho. And uh, so we've got that on the horizon, that the new building, we're probably looking at about a year, year and a half away on that. Um, Gosh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, I think that you kind of covered a lot of it, but yeah, that's very exciting. The growth. I think we we covered a lot of it. So we have a lot of stuff going on. I see great future for our economy, for Idaho, for businesses. And uh, we, we uh, hope to continue serving all of our clients uh, and giving them great service uh, for decades to come. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know if there is anything that you guys would like to know on in the future. So if you'd like John to speak about something, please let us know, we'd love to hear it. If not, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.